Good morning. I'm filming this. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> I'm a lot nervous. I'm filming this before Stephanie and my first virtual retreat. I get to teach so many people today. I'm very excited. Um, so I'm a little bit giddy and dorky and I'm going to be smiling big and cheesy the entire time. <laughs> but I am filming this because in the future, tomorrow morning, I'll, we will be posting uh, the 4S collaboration. And so if you don't remember, the 4S collaboration was uh, when Steven of the Idiot Quilter, Stephanie of Stephanie Stitches, Sean of the Guy Who Sews, and myself, Shannon of Slay Arts, uh, got together and we uh, had chosen three patterns each uh, of ones that we had wanted to do like they they were in our want to do list and we just hadn't gotten around to doing it and we needed that extra push and so we picked those three patterns and allowed everyone all of our subscribers to come on on our uh, community pages and vote for the pattern that everyone liked the best and everybody for me chose this so beautiful uh, it is the uh, deco tiles from Exhausted Octopus. I am insanely proud of that. It is so beautiful. Um, you'll see in the video I talk about the only pain points that I that I found for it. And so I'm, I'm going to bore you with that now. But I will, I will make this again. And I would make it over and over again. And I think I might make it in a couple of different uh, arrangements. Maybe like longer, like a table runner. Um, and... Uh, it, it, you know, a labor of love, make it even big enough for a, a, an actual qu like quilt, like quilt size, not bed size, but like throw size. Um, I, it, it was just so fun. I'm so glad that I chose uh, the colors that we picked during one of my lives. It just worked out that red and green were the first two that I put together. It had a, a different idea, but the red and green matches Stephanie's table runner that we had done earlier that year in the same uh, fabric which is ombre flurries by uh, VM Co it's just beautiful and I'm so excited to be able to share this now <laughs> I got to take it down before the class because I can't show it to anybody before uh, Monday morning but um, uh, I'm I'm so proud of it and it's going to hang here <laughs> after uh, for for a little while this is for sure gonna be uh, uh, entrant into the Frederick Fair this year for sure. I'm so proud of it. Anyway, all right, sorry. <laughs> big, big, big excitement about today. So excited about this collaboration. Uh, I, I think it, it went so well and it was so fun. You're you're gonna love everybody's final quilts. It, it's just so beautiful. And Stephen and Stephanie and their overachievement selves that they actually got two quilts done which both are amazing. Um, yeah, you guys are going to have fun. So I'm going to go ahead and start that and come back and, and say goodbye and to thank everybody. All right, see you in just a second. Hello, everybody. It is Stephanie, Sean, Shannon, and Stephen from the 4S Club. And this is the final video of our collab that we started way back in about September, October. I forget how long ago it was. Now, just to remind you what this was all about, we put up, each of us put up on our channel, three patterns that we were thinking of doing or wanted to do, but we let you, the subscribers, tell us which one you wanted us to do. And you did that and we have done them. And now this is the final reveal. We're each going to show you uh, what we ended up creating from that pattern. We're gonna show you the pattern first. We're gonna talk about our trials and tribulations and success level and everything with the pattern. I know I got a lot to say about that. And uh, when, of course I would, because is anything easy for me? No, <laughs> that's why I'm an idiot. But that's what we're going to talk about. And you're going to get to see some pictures. You're going to get to see them live as well uh, on here. And yeah, we're just going to go for it. So our first victim, I mean, our first presenter is going to be Stephanie. And I'm going to put up here on the screen share 
Stephanie's pattern, and then we'll see her beautiful creation and all. Oh, there we go. Okay, so Stephanie, tell us about. Um, so I had um, the puffin star from Art East quilting. That's the one you guys picked for me. I had two Art East patterns and one um, Elizabeth Hartman, and this is the one you guys chose. So um, I finished this one fairly quickly. Only took me a couple days. The this wasn't a hard pattern. It says advanced beginner. And the only reason I think for it be calling, uh, to be called advanced beginners, because there are some little tiny pieces, um, but the cutting is the tricky part. It, it's a lot of cutting. <laughs> so a cut for a really long time. And then you have to be really, really organized and really label everything really well. Um, if you do those things, then you'll be successful. But other than that, it was a pretty fun, uh, straightforward pattern. So let's take a look at the final version. And here it is, looking yeah. gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. So it was a lot of fun. Pretty. I used all grunge fabrics. Um, I love grunge. It's just, it's a little bit more than a solid, but it reads like a solid, uh, just gives a little bit of movement. And especially with animals, I really like the movement on the, on the animals with the grunge. So, and I think I we have a quilting. Thank I you. We have, I think we have a close up of that. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. my puffins. And of, I'm assuming you put this on your long arm. I did. I did. Yes. And as soon as I got it off and bound, my youngest son, who's been drooling over these puffins for months, took it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it it's gorgeous. It makes me want to do one now. It but... was a lot of fun. It, it went together quicker than you would think. So, But fun. you have a second one because I although do. this was the one that everybody picked, the, Stephanie had to go with the second choice too. So here it is. Yeah. Well, this one is the one that I was really hoping you guys would pick because I wanted to do it. Um, not that I, I mean, I was going to do all three eventually anyway. Haven't got to the third one yet, but <laughs> this was the second one uh, also from Art East Quilting called Going Coastal. Um, it's a, it's just, it just screams Stephanie because I love the water. I love anything beachy. Um, I live right off the shore of Lake Erie. So this one was totally me. And this one was a lot of fun to do. Again, I would say this one, it doesn't say on the pattern, but I would say this is probably more advanced beginner, maybe even teetering over to intermediate because there were so many pieces. The lobster alone had like, I don't even remember how many pieces, but he took me quite a while to piece the lobster. He, there's a lot of little pieces, but um, but it came together really nicely. And I just, I love it. My daughter picked out the mermaid colors because she's got dark hair. So she said the mermaid can't be blonde. <laughs> So, and I was again, I ask you about that because I remember you telling me at the retreat that yeah. it called for blonde, but you were not doing it blonde. No, nope, no, nope. my <laughs> daughter picked it out. And again, it's all done in grunge. So it gets a little bit of that movement to it. Um, I just really like grunge. So, yeah. what I love is how you're quilting in the hair, especially really yeah. the hair, the swirls. Was that on purpose? I, well, I wanted something that, um, when I picked the quilting that obviously looked like ocean waves because it's all ocean themed. And when it started going across her hair, I was like, oh, this is perfect. She looks like she's got wind blowing through her hair. And then if you look at the whale, he looks like he's got water washing over him. It just came out really well. I'm really excited about it. And I used a really light teal thread. I didn't want white because I didn't want to overtake everything. So it sort of blends in with the background, which I really like. So it yeah. really gives texture to the quilt too. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. Okay. So that was Stephanie. Now we're going to go to uh, Sean. But before I go to Sean, just let me let everybody see Sean. There he is. <laughs> uh, now you'll have to excuse Sean. Sean hasn't been well. And so he's got a raspy bedroom voice happening right here now. <laughs> so all you girls out there, just stop it. Just stop <laughs> it. And, uh, so let's get Sean's pattern up first of all, and then we'll come back to Sean because I don't have a picture of Sean's, but he'll show it to you live. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's my screen share. Let's go. And here we are. Okay. So there's Sean's pattern. So what do you have to say about this pattern? It looks different. Okay. Yes. Okay. So this is the Fab Farm by Elizabeth Hartman. This is my second Elizabeth Hartman pattern. And this is actually the large version of the quilts. The one I did was a small, which is like one, of, it's like basically a quarter 
of this quilt here. So my the one you'll see in a second is a little bit smaller. This I would say would be like maybe advanced beginner, but probably more so to intermediate. Um, it looks complicated. It's a lot of small pieces, kind of like what Stephanie was saying about hers. Um, but my tip for this is if you want to tackle this project is tackle it one block at a time, one animal at a time, because the pattern is written where you can cut out the pieces for one, one animal at a time. And if you tackle it like that, it doesn't seem so overwhelming because you're only looking at one page of instructions for cutting one, you know, one or two pages for assembly, and then it's all done. I did, my goal was to do um, one animal per week. Um, and I pretty much stuck to that. And it was a lot of fun because it was, instead of being one big project, I had like nine or 10 little projects. So I'll take you off screen share. And now <laughs> I'm going to put you in the spotlight so we can get a really good look at your beautiful quilt. Okay. okay. All right. So here we go. I used a, a green background and hopefully you can see it all right. Cause oh, <laughs> look at that little pig. Yeah, the pig is adorable. I love the sheep. Oh yeah, the pigs, the pig would have to be my favorite. Where is he coming out? Yeah, he's right, right, he? right there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the pig's cute. Yeah, so the pig is grunge based. And the other thing you wanted to do with this too, and I succeeded successfully, is this is all from stash. I did not go to the store for the first thing on this here. Um, and so I mean I just picked out what I had nice. in stash. And so this was the fun part about this project. And then the quilting for this, I just did a simple cross hatch. Yeah. because this is going to go to be a baby quilt because it measures out oh, 38 by 38. Okay. Um, one of my colleagues in a different department where I work is expecting a second child in about three weeks. And so I plan on gifting it to her. And so that way she can use it for her, um, her new incoming baby. And I didn't want to quilt it to death because that way she can just use it, um, you know, for her baby when, when I think it's a he, um, he arrives. So it's going to go. That, That's that is my quilt. Um, did I miss anything? I don't think so. That looks great. I don't think I'd attempt it. Too many little pieces. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not that bad. As I say, if you break it down into those single units, um, each one, I mean, there's probably not many more pieces in one of these than it is in one of your cats, for instance. Oh, well, true. Yeah, that could be as well, too. Well, that drove me nuts, too. But we'll come to that. But now <laughs> yeah. we're going to go to Shannon, and I'm going to Yay. put up on the screen Shannon's beautiful creation and i just love art deco so Me too. tell us about this pattern first yes. so this is from exhaust exhausted octopus and i've followed her for a while if, and she doesn't do a lot of of um fpp uh she does a lot of art quilts but uh this was what really stood out to me when she had released this i think two years ago now and so it, it had been in my Oh, wow, I really want to do this. And I was super, super glad this is the one everybody picked because I really wanted to focus on this one. Um, and yeah, I I love this, but I, I the picture is great and is what drew me in. But I am so pleased with the Christmas quilt. And if I need to pull it, I can take it down off the wall if I need to. But I was just so proud. I wanted to, what's that? It's looking very good, just as it is right now. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to hang it up. I was so proud. And I just, I love it so much. <laughs> it is so beautiful. I'm really glad that I went, uh, that just on a, on happenstance, started with the red and green, because I thought I was going to do all different colors. Uh, and the red and green just looked so pretty on one of my lives that I just went with the Christmassy. And uh, it, it ends up working really well with uh, Table Runner that I made at Stephanie's retreat last year, too. So it's like a complete set now for my dining room. Put and this it, on the wall and the Table Runner down. And it looks like stained glass. Mm -hmm. It does. So it's it the looks same like thing. you have a stained glass window back there. Yeah. I will say there's, because it's all very straight lines and there's not, there's no, um, it's all one block. So this is, this is the same block repeated over and over and over again. And then the same like setting triangles over and over. It was the piecing of it was very very easy. Uh, if if you've never paper pieced before, this would be an okay one to start with. I I don't think it was difficult at all. The hard part was where all of these pieces meet. This that was super thick. It was very very thick, and it 
gave me fits when it came to quilting it. I just echoed across all the straight black lines on either side. And it gave me fits when I got to those corners. I, I, I thought I hammered them down pretty well. I, I should have beat it to pieces to, to make it even flatter because that, that was what, what was what stressed me out at, by the time it was putting it together um everything else was so easy and just oh, i love it but that that was the part that i think would would be a struggle for everybody that's the only reason why i would say an advanced beginner just because you probably have seen some things by the time you're an advanced beginner and and you won't be um as shocked when you get to those thicker thicker spots yeah. Well, it turned out beautiful. So I guess it was worth the effort. <laughs> it was, it was for sure. Okay. Well, that's great. Thank you. Okay. So I'm just going to do screen share here for mine as soon as I find the screen share. And here we go. Okay. So this, now this was the pattern I was hoping everybody would choose because this one I really wanted to do the scrappy cats. And I figured this one, it's all of the, you're making it with scrap fabrics so it doesn't really matter what colors you use it's going to be really straightforward because you're really only making one block and not a problem yeah there was a problem okay i sewed tails on upside down because there's a lot of geometrical shapes here there are a lot of pieces and although they're not difficult pieces there are quite a few of them and it's very easy to get them all mixed up so here's the final product and uh, you will notice that some of the cats look a little different than other ones i mean they're the basic shape but depending on the colors that i used like you know this one up here sort of doesn't have a face the same as this one has a cross across the face kind of a thing so it's truly scrappy but um i did quilt the heck out of it and here's a close-up i found this pattern that is little cat paws which i thought wow. was suitable and i had this fabric in my stash my backing or uh backing fabric and i thought if you look at it very carefully it's got kind of the shape of the cats yeah in there too so that's why i used it plus it was really colorful so i would put this one at probably a confident beginner and someone with a great deal of patience and like sean said about doing his different pieces I would do one cat at a time. Um, although they're all the same pieces in the whole bit, it is so easy if you're geometrically challenged like I am to get things flipped upside down. I really had to have Walter look at it and see. And of course, within 30 seconds, he went, okay, why is that tail going that way? <laughs> okay, rip, rip, rip. I did a lot of ripping on this. So mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be easy. Now, I did get around going to doing this one. This was a second choice, the one called Bundles of Joy. And I've had this pattern for a while. And I had a um, bundle of Christmas fabrics that I bought in Halifax when Stephanie and I were at the uh, Canadian Quilt Show. Uh, and I thought when I saw this pattern, that would be perfect because it's supposed to be little bundles of fabric all wrapped up. So here is the now this picture of it doesn't show you i guess i get the wrong picture up here it has been quilted it is done i put the wrong one up but um if you take a look at it i had a little bit of fun i'm going to see if i can blow this up a little bit i decided oops okay to get out of the comfort zone here with that pattern and do something else because i thought these little bundles looked like cats so on a few of them, I actually used a <laughs> machine to put on little cat eyes and little cat whiskers and a little cat nose. But beside it, if you notice, there's a few bundles that have claw marks. It's not easy to see in this picture, but I have claw mm. marks in it. Because what do cats do with presents under a Christmas tree? They will destroy them. So this was called Bundles of Joy. It isn't anymore. I call it Bundles Destroyed. <laughs> like that. only it's cat so lovers cute. only cat lovers will get this um so yeah that's what i did with it let me take this off okay so that is all of our quilts uh we had a lot of fun i think doing mm -hmm. this we, might we did do, yeah we might do something like this down the road again uh as well um 
yeah, uh, there was a third pattern that we all had as well. I don't know if anybody is planning to do the third pattern. Mine was uh, an Elizabeth Hartman, the one with the foxes on it, which I've never done Elizabeth Hartman. And, uh, you know, because your Sean was Elizabeth Hartman, right? Yes. Yeah. And I don't know, you're scaring me now. About that. <laughs> Um, really i i'm with stephanie the cutting is the the hardest part um once you get it cut out if you're organized um it, it putting it together is to me yeah the cutting was more difficult um or more time consuming so don't let that just then take your time with the cutting like if you're trying to rush and get it cut out in 20 minutes you get drive yourself nuts um but just enjoy the process cut it out be organized and then just take it step by step her patterns are incredibly well written. Um, there's lots of pictures, lots of words. Um, don't let it intimidate you. Well, that's my one on my list. I don't know when I'll get to it, but it's on my list. How about you, uh, Stephanie? You had well, a actually, I was going to ask that question to everybody too. I wondered if you all were going to do your other <laughs> patterns that you have left over. I know Stephen and I each have one, and Sean and Shannon, you both have two. I am planning on doing the last one. It's called Rainbow Rainforest by Elizabeth Hartman, mm. and it has a sloth in it. And my daughter loves sloth, so I have to make it. <laughs> and Shannon, what about you? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, Lauren told me the, the one that she would have picked was the fan one. I, I, nobody's oh. going to remember it by now, but uh, so I'm going to end up having to do that one in purples. <laughs> and then the other one that one that reminded me of irises, I think I'm going to do for my mom because the iris is her favorite color. So. I'll end up doing them. And what about you, Sean? Absolutely. I mean, I wanted to do all three patterns. Um, I just figured it was fun, you know, as part of this collab to let the viewers decide which one I was going to do first. Um, I'll probably tackle the produce section next, which is another Elizabeth Hartman pattern. And I hope to start that maybe the next month or two. And the other one was the blowing up bunnies, which was the um, <laughs> Art East one with the bubble gum. And I want to try and get that done this year. My goal is to get both of those um, pieced by the um, end of the year, but we'll, yeah, we'll see what happens. If it drags into 2025, so be it. So everybody stay tuned for our future projects, of course. You'll all be the first to know when we decide. <laughs> for certain on that. So any final parting words before we go? I just want to say that this was a lot of fun. This video is will be, well, you will see it. It's being posted on Monday on all of our channels. So, you know, you can pick your favorite. We won't be that upset. When you go to Stephanie's channel. <laughs> oh, I'll only cry a little bit. Just a touch. Yeah, a little bit. No, but anyways, that's where they'll be. And in fact, as I say that now, you're already watching this. So the yeah. point's moot. But <laughs> <laughs> Any final words from anybody? Anybody want to say anything? No, I just want to say I had a great time. And um, I can't remember whose idea this was originally. I think it might have been Sean. So Sean's, yeah. yeah, thank you for inviting all of us to do this together. I love actually that we had like a goal because it made it pushed me to get things done. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah, me too. And I appreciate you all hanging out, you know, like and being a great to this. And I love the interactive part. I, I love that we um, were able to let the viewers decide because, you know, sometimes we get these patterns. Like there's so many patterns we want to do and yeah. so limited time and why not let the viewers decide which one because you know they're the reason why we're producing this content is to let them enjoy it so you know yeah. let let them choose so and hopefully we get to do something like this again in the future that was yeah. the funnest part for me that letting other folks decide and like letting them be a part of this yeah. collaboration was so much fun yeah absolutely and of course, I learned a good lesson from this. When you let other people decide, make sure you manipulate them better. <laughs> I mean, you know, oh, no, it's a thrill, really. Actually, read the damn pattern a little bit more thoroughly before I start it. Before you choose it. <laughs> yeah, before I choose it. Yeah, true. Okay, well, this is great, everybody. Thanks for coming on here, showing your final versions of everything. And yeah. And stay tuned, everybody, to all of our channels because it's a new year and we all have plans for all kinds of things. So, you know, get rid of your cable subscription. You have us. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> exactly. Bye, everybody. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Happy sewing. All right. So there you go. There's everybody's projects. And isn't it? I am so excited about everybody's. Uh, I love Stephen's idea of adding the little kitty to the second um, pattern that he'd done the with the packages 
uh, the little faces and the cat scratches on the packages. Totally adorable. Uh, it was so fun watching Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie was finishing up the Going Coastal in Georgia, and that was a lot of fun. And I loved the grunge. I liked like the the depth uh, that the grunge gave to, especially to me. I really liked uh, the fisherman's jacket in that yellow. Um, it was like dingy and like you know grungy. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, so that was fun to watch be be worked up, uh, and then uh, with the green background that Sean decided to use for his fab farm. You know, I'm excited about that. And, but I like the green for the, like the farm life and everything. So super cool, very proud. And yeah, I mean, it was, it, it, I'm, I'm ex excited that it's done because we completed our, our, our mission to, to get the, these pieces done, but I'm sad it's done cause you know, it was a fun collaboration. So, uh, Definitely look for for more fun things coming from all four channels uh, for 2024, and I will see you all Thursday morning for my podcast. All right, thanks everybody. Oh, I can't forget to take this down. Wish me luck for the <laughs> for the retreat. I'm so excited. All right, bye everybody.